Praise the Lord and welcome back to First Pentecostal. Uh, today, actually yesterday, we celebrated the 4th of July, the day of independence. And I just want to say this morning that I am so thankful for our nation that we have the liberty to worship. Um, we have been, um, on another note, studying about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, is studied by Nathan D. Mackey and uh, several weeks ago we started with the God of your fathers um, and the focus was how God take imperfect people like Moses we talked about Moses and he empowers them to be all that God means for them to be or to become we also talked in a lesson after that, God of the faithful, and we saw how God showed patience with Abraham um, as he was seeking after the promise that God made to him. So the same way God desires to empower us to become faithful in our pursuit of the promise that God has for us, not to give up, to move forward. <clears throat> the next lesson following that, it was God of the fearful. And we talked about Isaac, um, how God worked through Isaac. Um, and he knew the fear of God uh, through observing his father. Um, but he experienced times of fear as well. And God desires to empower us to overcome our fears and fulfill his plan for our lives. And today we're going to talk about the God of the failures. Um, we're going to look into Jacob's life. The focus for this lesson is just as God brought about a change in Jacob's life, God desires to empower us to rise above the failures in our own lives. Uh, so let's further look into the life of Jacob. From birth, Jacob's life was colored by negative expectations. Negative expectations from the parents, his name, different factors. Um, let's read Genesis 25 from verse 25 to verse 26. Even as Jacob and Esau wrestled in the womb of Rebekah, God had foretold that the elder son would serve the younger. On the day they were born, Esau was born first, then Jacob was born as he grabbed Esau's heel, heels or heel, yes. Um, back in the days, names meant something in the society. A name could shape a person's destiny. From the moment of birth, Isaac and Rebecca, they studied their boys to try to figure out what kind of name they can give them that uh, would fit uh, due to their character or their physical appearance. So they named the oldest Esau, which means red, because he had red hair all over him. Um, and then they named Jacob Supplanter. They named their youngest son Jacob, which means Supplanter. And that was due to the fact that he grabbed his brother's heel um, upon birth. He was the one expected to try and trip his brother up in order to get ahead by dishonest means. And today, uh, people still doing that. Um, many people um, place expectations on a family member, a friend, a co-worker. You know, like, for example, your dad was an alcoholic. You'll probably be an alcoholic, those kind of things. Um, uh, on top of that, Jacob also faced favoritism uh, from the parents, which drove a wedge in the family. We see in Genesis 25, verses 27 and 28, um, how favoritism was definitely um, something that took place in their family. It says, so the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, but Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. But Rebekah loved Jacob. So what happened? Jacob lived up to his parents' negative expectations. Let's go to Genesis 25 verses 29 to 34. Now Jacob cooked a stew and Esau came in from the field and he was weary. 
And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die, so what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank arose and went his way thus Esau despised his birthright that's a lesson all by itself but we're focusing on Jacob today so but this behavior showed the selfishness on Jacob's part he was willing to use any leverage he could to advance his position in the family so let's read on chapter 27 verses 1 through 10 now it came to pass when Isaac was old and his eyes were so dim that he could not see that he called Esau his older son and said to him, My son, and he answered him, Here I am. Then he said, Behold, now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me. And make me savory food such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt game and to bring it. So Rebekah spoke to Jacob, her son, saying, Indeed, I heard your father speak to Esau, your brother, saying, Bring me game and make savory food for me that I may eat it and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to what I command you. Go now to the flock and bring me from there two choice kids of the goats, and I will make savory food from them for your father such as he loves. Then you shall take it to your father, that he may eat it, and that he may bless you before his death. We're talking here favoritism going on. Let's look at verses 15 to 17. Then Rebekah took the choice clothes of her elder son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her youngest son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she gave the savory food and the bread, which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. So that's mom in action. Let's follow through verses 18 to 27. We will see Jacob in action at this time. So he went to his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you told me. Please arise, sit, and eat of my game, that you, your soul may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord your God brought it to me. Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near, that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him, because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. Then he said, Are you really my son Esau? He said, I am. He said, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's game so that my soul may bless you. So he brought it near to him and he ate and he brought him wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. In verses 28 and 29, we will see how Jacob actually stole Esau's blessing. Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's son bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be those who bless you. In verses 30 to 36, we see where Esau realized what had taken place. And of course, the heat is on. 
Now it happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game that your soul may bless me. And his father said to him, Who are you? So he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him, and indeed he shall be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me, me also, O father. But he said, Your brother came with the seed and has taken away your blessing. And Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me this two times. He took away my birthright, and now look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? We see Esau's revenge in the next few verses, 41 to 46. So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. And the words of Esau, her older son, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Surely your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you by intending to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, arise, flee to my brother Laban in Haran, and stay with him a few days until your brother Fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereaved also of you both in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth like this, who are the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? So what happened? Jacob ran for his life with just a shirt on his back. In Genesis 28 verses 1 to 2, we see that Isaac placed a blessing upon Jacob and it was not stolen. It was from his heart. It says, Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padam Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. So Jacob went from being the second son of a wealthy chieftain to being a homeless, penniless vagabond. He went from the comfort of the tent to a stone pillow. At Bethel, Jacob hit rock bottom. But guess what? God was there. God amazingly gave Jacob a vision at Bethel and offered him a covenant. We're talking about a God of the failures. Praise the Lord. So this is where God starts restoring Jacob's life. You know, sometimes we think that we're hopeless. There's nothing else that can be done. But yet God's mercy is new every day. So needless to say, consequences did follow Jacob. But God was still with him. Let's look in Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 22. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, the ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Asaph. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east and to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 
Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. What a powerful promise. It is so wonderful to know that no matter what we go through, no matter our sin, if we repent, God continues to be with us. Verse 16, then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been loosed before. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. That was the condition that Jacob was actually offering to God. But God is faithful. So God gave Jacob the same covenant he had made with Abraham and Isaac. We saw that in verses 13 to 15. It's just amazing. Why would God do that? Jacob was the lowest of the low and at the lowest point of a low life. Yet God met him there. Today we can rejoice because God is not just the God of the heroes and the holy. He's not just the God of the brilliant and the brightest. He's the God of both saints and sinners. He's the God of the cheaters and the sneaks. He's the God of the flawed and the failures. He is the God of whoever will come to him just as they are at your lowest point. Just like with Jacob, God is there. So Jacob accepted the covenant, as we said, but with conditions. His first reaction, it was amazement. His second reaction was fear. When he said, how dreadful is this place? It took him kind of by surprise. But what he did next is so significant. He took the stone that he put his head on and he made it into an altar and he poured oil over it. Whatever rock hard situation you're facing right now, set it up as an altar to the Lord. Say, God, I am giving you this trouble. I'm giving you this sickness. I'm giving you this hardship. I'm pouring oil over it in worship. Still, I will worship. Still, I will praise you. Still, I will serve you. There may be nothing here but stones, but this is your house. Let me tell you, God is here right now. Maybe like Jacob, you don't realize it, but God is here. This is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Jesus is here right now. Just reach out and touch him. And I feel that that is speaking to somebody out there that is going through a very difficult trial. I'm telling you, God is there. Give him the praise. Make an altar wherever you are in the situation that you're going through. See, Jacob made the choice to do that. Jacob also tried to barter with God, saying, If God will be with me, I will do all these things, and then shall the Lord be my God. <laughs> this seems a little bit presumptuous on, God's, on Jacob's part, but still God did not withdraw his promise covenant with Jacob. God knew Jacob had a long way to go, but he had taken the first step. So what did God do? God protected Jacob and brought him back to Canaan safely. God protected Jacob from the scheming of Laban. Jacob went to his uncle Laban in Haran, and there God still blessed him. So let's read a few verses to capture the story as a whole, okay? We're going to be jumping around, but we're going to read in Genesis chapter 29, starting with verse 15. Then Laban, Laban said to Jacob, because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what should your wages be? If we move on to verse 18, he said, now Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. 
in verse 25, he said, So it came to pass in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? What is not for Rachel that I, was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me still another seven years. In verse 28, Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, so he gave him his daughter Rachel as wife also. Let's move on to Genesis chapter 30, verses 25 and 26, and then we'll jump to verse 43. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me go. For you know my service which I have done for you. Verse 43, Thus the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. Chapter 31, we'll start with verse 3. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. Verse 17, Then Jacob rose and set his sons and his wives on camels, and he carried away all his livestock and all his possessions which he had gained, his acquired livestock which he had gained in Padam Aram, to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Verse 24, But God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said to him, Be careful that you speak to Jacob neither good nor bad. And then we jump to verse 44. Now therefore come let us make a covenant you and I and let it be a witness between you and me. And we're seeing the progress of things, how God kept Jacob through it all. Verse 45, so Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. Then Jacob said to his brethren, gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there on the heap. Laban called it Jagar Sahadutha, but Jacob called it Galib. And Laban said, this heap is a witness between you and me this day. Therefore, its name was called Galib, also Mizpah, because he said, May the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent one from another. If you afflict my daughters or if you take other wives besides my daughters, although no man is with us, see, God is witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, this is chapter, uh, verse 51, Here is this heap and here is this pillar which I have placed between you and me. This heap is a witness and this pillar is a witness that I will not pass beyond this heap to you and you will not pass beyond this heap and this pillar to me for harm. The God of Abraham, the God of Nahor and the God of their father judge between us. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain and called his brethren to eat bread. And they ate bread and stayed all night on the mountain. Let's move on to Genesis chapter 32. We'll start with verse 3 so that we can see what transpired after that. He was on his way home and now he had to confront his brother Esau. Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother in the land of Zair, the country of Edom. And he commanded them saying, Speak thus to my lord Esau, thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, and male and female servants. And I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find favor in your sight. Then the messengers returned to Jacob saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he also is coming to meet you, and four hundred men are with him. So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and herds, and camels into two companies. Fear. Last lesson was God of the fearful. Here is Jacob experiencing fear. Let's go to verse 13. So he lodged there that same night and took what came to his hand as a present for Esau his brother and also say, Behold, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, 
I will appease him with the present that goes before me, and afterwards I will see his face, perhaps he will accept me. So what happens, he begins to wrestle with God, which is a great lesson for us when fear grips us. We need to wrestle with God. We, fear is not of God. Fear is of the enemy. And it is perfect love that casts out fear. Let's look at verse 22. And he rose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jacob. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. What happened? He was left alone. God made Jacob wrestle with him and change his name. He is a God of the failures. Chapter 32, verses 24 to 28. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Jacob, at that moment, he had been transformed from supplanter to prince who has power with God. God is the God of the failures. And God wants to change your name too. God gave Jacob favor in the sight of Esau and brought him back to Bethel. Jacob's gift and humility placated his brother. We see that in Genesis chapter 33, verses 4 to 11. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted his eyes and saw the women and children and said, Who are these with you? So he said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the maidservants came near, they and their children, and bowed down. And Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. Afterward, Joseph and Rachel came near, and they bowed down. Then Esau said, What do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, These are to find favor in thy sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. And Jacob said, No, please. If I have now found favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand, inasmuch as I have seen your face as though I have seen the face of God, and you were pleased with me. Please take my blessing that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. So he urged him, and he took it. Ultimately, they parted on good terms, each to their own land. Genesis 33, verses 16 and 17. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir, and Jacob journeyed, journeyed to Sukkoth, built himself a house, and made booths for his livestock. Therefore, the name of the place is called Sukkoth. In, verse, in chapter 35, verses 6 and 7, So Jacob came to Luz, which is the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him, and he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. And in verses 11 through 15, it says, And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it. And to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him, Bethel, the God of the failures. Today we have seen how God's mercy is new every day. No matter what your past has brought forth, God is a God of restitution. You don't have to stay in a fallen state. Repent 
turn to God and he will surely establish a covenant with you. You will be blessed. Arise, allow God to heal you and prosper you. In Jesus' name, God bless.